Um, let's talk a little bit about like, I like that you're getting like, like the skills of being a brand strategist and everything that comes with it, but you're also getting into like the mindset, which I think is the most limiting thing for a lot of people where you think you need X degree to go and get X job, or you need like this portfolio to get started. And I think, you know, for lack of a better way of describing it, the world is getting flatter in terms of jobs we can get. So what is, what do you think the biggest blocker is for people's mindset for not being able to like take the dive and maybe do a, a career pivot or, or jump into something like this? Yeah. One of, I, there's multiple things that can get in the way. One of the things that I'm seeing consistently and that I have felt myself too, is that whenever they want to make a huge pivot in their career, they immediately think they don't know enough to get started. So they're like, okay, I need to go study for years. I need to go get the certifications. I need to go get the validation from if it's a mentor or something outside of themselves to feel like they have enough to try. The thing is though, it's a knowledge trap. They end up getting stuck in this knowledge trap and then they there's no end point. Like when is the time that they're actually gonna feel confident enough to go out and experiment and potentially fail, but then to learn from those mistakes. And I think the fear of failure, the knowledge trap, like I'm seeing those things are preventing people from actually moving forward. Even if they have enough knowledge, they just don't know that they have enough to go out and fail right now. And you want to fail because you want to learn from those mistakes so that you can iterate and get better the next time. So I think that's the biggest thing that I'm seeing from people. Yeah. I mean, that that's, so powerful and like I, I i totally relate to that too like i've had a lot of like twists and turns like a lot of the self-doubt joining a new team you always like you know the the ramp up and the doubting of yourself is, is so big but um that's cool i like that you're bringing in like there's so much um especially with like the current world we live in is like a lot of times like mental health and like just talking about like how we're feeling and like the emotional side of being um like a, an effective coworker, strategist person in, in corporate America, for lack of a better way of describing it, is like, um, it needs to be talked about more. So I love that we're kind of going both. You're getting the skill set, but you're also talking about like ways to energize yourself to overcome some like hurdles that you can easily break down. So the, the one thing that like, you know, we've talked to a few other brand strategists on Design Huddle and, you know, the definition obviously varies greatly of like what a brand strategist does. In, 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 from your perspective, like what would be the ideal anatomy of a brand strategist? So if it's like a hundred percent like of X, like, so is it like 25% self-starter, 50% like graphic, you know, like rock star graphic designer, like what is the anatomy of a perfect brand strategist Ooh. in your eyes? Ooh, I haven't thought about this before. The first thing that when you asked that question, the first thing that came to my mind was emotional intelligence, self-awareness. Yes and emotional intelligence, because I'm realizing that the more and more I can know and be aware of myself as a human, that's it. Just what am I, how do I handle my emotions? What am I into? What catches my attention? And I start noticing that in myself, but then also am able to understand that in other people. That's when we can be a really good brand strategist. So I would say a very large percentage would be taken up of emotional intelligence and self-awareness because if we're trying to help a brand and a business connect emotionally with a customer, we need that. We absolutely need that. So I, I would say that is like the top, the top thing. How do you improve your own emotional intelligence? Go to therapy. Like what are some ways that you can make, be, like get better? Like, you know what I mean? It's not something that like you can take a course, yeah. I guess, and like read about emotional intelligence, but that yeah. is a skill that I feel like is actually like, it's so powerful and I totally agree with you, but it's also something that's not as like, go take X course. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Any it tips has to there? Do, yeah. It has to do a lot with uh, vulnerability, learning how to accept your own less than perfect human humanity that you have. So whatever you need to do to get to that point, whether it's go read Brene Brown's book, go talk about it with some friends. Um, look at, look into mindfulness, mindfulness, meditation, go to therapy. I highly, highly suggest therapy for people to, to really, but, but go with an open heart, um, that wanting to actually learn about yourself, not just so that you can get the right things to say, the right things to do, but, um, 
really go on like a self-discovery adventure. I love that. I mean, it's like, it's simple, but it's so, it's so true. Um, I'm also like, yeah, echoing pro therapy. Everyone needs to look inward, improve, like self-improvement is something that is like consistently overlooked. Um, so the one thing that I, I know I mentioned in our brief intro, so you worked, I guess like you graduated, graduated from college. Your first job was at Oakley. Is that right? Yes. Yes, it was. Oakley. So you kind of got your, you know, you started learning graphic design. So you started as a graphic designer. When did you start to shift to saying like, all right, I can do like, you know, the visual aspects, the responsibilities of being a graphic designer. When did you find that passion for like brand strategy? Yeah, I had a, I had a slow progression into getting into brand strategy where I started off as a, a what, what do they call it? Like a, the generalist graphic designer. I did everything and wh whatever it was that they needed. I did that with clients as well as Oakley. But then I got moved into a specific department that was just brand. So we did anything that was particular to the brand, not, not for advertising or marketing. So we, we worked with the product team. Uh, we worked on branding. We worked on all the different sub brands. And then I was getting interested in that. And then I moved into strategy. Um, when I learned about it from my coach, Christo, and he's like, I think this is the thing that's missing for you. If you look into this, learn this, I think this is going to open up a lot for you. And I didn't know what he was talking about. And I went and learned it. And I'm like, oh, this is what you're talking about. This is the missing piece that answered all these questions of how, how do I know that what I create is actually going to move the needle for my client's business and not just be a, a vanity request because they feel like their, their business or their website, it looks outdated, but that they actually need it to get more customers or get a particular type of customer and they have more ways of measuring the results of that. I, I didn't know even how to have those conversations. And so learning brand strategy, as well as all the things that that brought with it, um, opened my eyes up too. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Design Huddle. The opinions expressed are solely our own and do not express the views or opinions of our employer.